Let's do this. Even though our apartment lease was up and we chose not to renew, we still had some loose ends to tie up with the business, as well as packing and outfitting our new ride. My dad and Lindsay were amazing and hooked us up with a comfortable and familiar place to stay. Also, our hosts, Ryan and Jared, were gracious and super chill, which made the transition stress-free and easy during this time of transition as we finished things up with the business and packed up the last of our belongings for life on the road. We were really excited to finally set out, even though we didn't exactly have a firm roadmap or endpoint, and some things were still very much up in the air. If we're being honest, there are a few things happening that made leaving Seattle, both personally and professionally, somewhat inconvenient. Nonetheless, even with all the changes in our lives, things had finally been set in motion. No matter what it was, we were going to have to support everyone as best we could from the road because at the end of the day, it really was time to go. So to make things just slightly more interesting, just as we were heading out, I came down with a bad head cold a couple of days before our departure. So we're about two hours outside of uh, Crater Lake and uh, it's been a good drive so far. The problem is, uh, Norell woke up feeling pretty sick this morning, um, just kind of uh, sore throat, runny nose, no energy, so she slept most of the way um, up to here, which means I've done about eight hours of driving so far, and uh, starting to get a little tired, but it looks like uh, we'll be camping somewhere south of uh, Crater Lake, so it's a lower elevation, which means it should be warmer. Right now it's about 34 degrees up there, and I uh, thought it wouldn't be a good idea to do our first night in the sub overland in, uh, in freezing temps. So we'll uh, keep you updated and uh, shoot some video of uh, the drive in and, and next thing you should see is Crater Lake. Odell Lake with Diamond Peak right there. And just need to stretch our legs. How are you feeling? All right, Norella's shivering. <laughs> so cold. Yep, we are not camping up here. <laughs> we're gonna go check out the visitor center, and then after that, we're gonna go somewhere down south. Klamath Falls. Klamath Falls, and we're gonna. It's camp more like there. 50 degrees down there. It's like 32 up here right now. Yeah, it's kind of cold. What a nice view. <laughs> so, after a grand total of three minutes standing there at the edge. Uh, here at the little village, Norell got too cold and we don't want her to get any more sick, so we're gonna pop our heads in the uh, gift shop and then uh, head down to warmer climate. So we just got our first sticker and uh, I mean we had a few stickers from before we left. Uh, Norell's mom gave us two and uh, came with a bunch, the uh, sub overland did. But this is our first one we actually earned, so. Getting stuff organized? Yep. I think we're gonna need a roof rack. Yep. First night in the sub overland, woken up at 7 a.m. by duck hunters. No, try at like 6 a.m. Well, yeah, they start at 6 a.m. <laughs> nah. Fuck them. So when I was a kid and Tyler and I would play duck hunt on Nintendo, I thought we were going overboard by just rapid firing. Turns out that's exactly what real duck hunters do. We're here where the California Gold Rush started. So I came here a bunch when I was a kid. I know definitely from her, for my dad's cousin's wedding. Uh, and uh, I tried to find it back by memory, but it's changed quite a bit. 
I remember it for uh, two reasons. Number one being apparently my great 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 grandpa came for the gold rush in uh, 1849 and he either just really sucked at prospecting or he was a little bit late but uh, he did not do well and so he picked up painting and he made some cash selling paintings to uh, the 49ers. The uh, second reason is because it's so small. It could change the, uh, the entire west coast of the United States, or it did change the entire west coast of the United States, and it is just a small wood structure. And it's, uh, it's amazing to me how, how sometimes uh, small things make a big, big difference. One epidemic in 1833 killed half of the Valley uh, Native Americans. Epidemic of? of disease that the fur trappers brought with them. Damn.